Hi. I was just talking to nobody because I forgot to turn the hit the button. So, howdy. Uh, I hope this finds everybody healthy, happy. It's a nice day outside. I'm told. Um, I can see it out through my basement windows here that that it looks like it's a pretty <laughs> decent day. Um, so. Anyway, um, I just wanted to show you this really quick. It was something I played with last night. It was kind of fun. Um, the th interesting thing about it was it was a really, really great illustration for me as to um, sometimes it's better than not to have the lines like, it, like it's a coloring book. So, so here's the background with lines and here's the background without. And here's a dino with lines and here's a dino without and I actually think I like it better without um, it's a little rough it's not as clearly defined I mean if you come down into here and I turn off the lines you know, it's a little ragged around the edges and stuff like that but I think it still looks pretty cool um, I kind of like it it was one of the biggest Photoshop things I think I've ever created it was it's a pretty big file um, so Anyway, uh, so for, I'm going to turn him off because he's, or close him because he's a pretty big file and I don't want my computer to freak out. So um, here's, the, here's the, the white paper we're working with today. Uh, so today I thought that we would talk about um, practicing with shapes. And we talked, touched on it a little bit when we did the um, fish the other day. Uh, but... I want to talk about it a little bit more and I don't want to use a big brush like that. I want to use my mechanical pencil. Uh, so I'm going to try to do everything not using any like Photoshop tricks and stuff like that and, and other than layers uh, so that you can do this at home on paper if that makes any sense. Um, still working on the paper over the shoulder thing and haven't really figured out the technology for that yet or the the rig that I need over my head to shoot down here to have me do paper. Um, but I'm still, I'm working on my Wacom tablet. I think you can see it here. Uh, where is it? There it is. Um, there it is. Um, which is basically a, it's like a giant trackpad that uses a pen. Um, the, pen the pen and the uh, pad work together to, uh, the prints are sensitive so I can draw harder or lighter um, so that's basically what we are um, today we uh, the best way to communicate with me right now um, is to um, while this is live is to t have your parents tweet um, and if the phone goes off for a second I see there's a lot of traffic going on as far as uh, uh, my school district webmaster stuff going on so um, but anyway uh, Tweet and the um, the hashtag is C T draw with see there's two W's there with skip and that's all one so that's Twitter. Um, or you can communicate with me through Facebook. Uh, and then when I say you, I mean your parents. Um, because if you're younger, you shouldn't be on Facebook yet. At least the, if, you're, if you're a child that goes to school with me, um, you're, you should not have Facebook yet. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, Facebook or, 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 um, or Twitter. And I've got them running over here on the Mac. So... Um, so I can walk, I can look, if you see me looking down like this every once in a while, it's because I'm looking at the Mac. Uh, so there's our layer with a hashtag. I'm just going to leave that there. I'll turn it off every once in a while like this. Um, so here's our white sheet of paper. And one of the things I've done and the, and the kids like is my birds. So I do, you know, a line. I hope you can see that. Um, and I just do random shapes. And this sort of came about one day because I had just 
wanted to play with different shapes and see how many things I could do with the same shapes. So I'm going to do these shapes like this, sketch them out. There's a, an oval, here's a circle. Um, anyway, uh, and, uh, and the line. So I'll use the line in some of them, some of them I won't use the line in. Um, but I wanted to see how many different things I could create with, with these. I'm going to add, suggest that you maybe draw them a little further apart. Um, so that you have room. Um, so I'll do that now. So again, if you see me looking down, number one is because my keyboard's over here. So, um, so when I go to undo something or do something like that, it, it means I have to go over there. Move him over to And give us some space here because some of these things are going to be used for for um, a shape that has something hanging off of it you know what I mean it'll be like the basic of a basis of a of a, of a thing um, so these are all set up I'm going to leave them on a layer the line back underneath here like this I'm gonna leave them on a layer and then I'm just gonna I'll, I'll draw over them and then we'll have different layers of different little um, things um, you can do it just by sketching them very lightly and then going over them with a marker or a sharpie or you know crayons markers crayons even just pencils pencils are cool sometimes you know you can just sketch actually pencils are really cool um, if you think about it, it's a drawing tool it's been around for a really long time um, so anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. This is, um, this is the hashtag. This is the shapes. This is hashtag. And I'm going to do another one on top of this one. This will be our first one. So if I can zoom in here a little bit. And you can do that just by looking closer at your paper. Um, do watch your back though just don't don't stoop over a lot so anyway this is the first one i'm going to do is is birds um because i like the idea and this I, i've drawn this before at school and um you know the first so the first one's going to be birds i'm going to get a marker for this We'll see how this goes. I'm going to fade this background out a little bit. So it's barely there. There we go. I think we should be good. All right. So for me, birds, second only to fish, I think, as far as things I really like to draw. Um, you know, start with an eye. I'm drawing on the wrong layer. And a beak. Sometimes my brushes give me a hard time. Let's go to a different brush. Um, so they all have beaks, right? Birds have beaks. Ducks have beaks. They're birds too. Um, so that gives us uh, that gives us, you know, the people know it's a it's a bird, right? Because they can see a beak. Okay. Um, so you can do that. The interesting thing about doing birds with these shapes and stuff like that, and let's just do shapes, we'll do birds first. So, you know, they have a line about here, which I'll make the wings. 
right? You can sort of fluff them out a little bit if you want to. Some of them have like, you know, little heads with little crests on the top of them like cardinals. And then the cool thing about this one is because um, you can do the little ruffle feathers here too if you want to. Um, it's because they're on a line you can sort of do toes like they're hanging on the foam line which I kind of like too. All right. Um, so there's one. So now that by pointing the beak different ways, and I think we briefly touched on this in the first sort of test one we did, um, pointing the beak different ways and aligning the eyes to that the beak, you can make the bird do other things. So like I can have this beak, this bird looking directly at his neighbor because the beak is pointed, you can see right there, the beak is pointed to where he's looking at. Um, and birds by definition um, I don't know what I just did, but that's not what I wanted to do. Um, birds by definition, or not by definition, but by, you know, the way they look and everything, um, they uh, sort of definitely look down their beaks. So there's my bird. Give him a little tail. He's puffed up because it's cold outside, although it's, I guess it's really not today. And there's our second bird. So that's what we played with. Now so we a triangular bird and an oval-ish bird. Um, let's do a square bird, and he is going to be looking over sort of this way, right? So if he looks this way, right, I'm going to draw the beak that is um, that is that way. So I'm going to sort of draw the beak like this. The eyes, eh, I don't like those. Don't really like the beak either. Make him look that way and make the eyes kind of sort of off center. So here's the center of the square. I'm going to make the eyes kind of shift to one side. Um, there's going to be nothing of the wing on that side, but we'll do the wing on this side. Um, I'm going to have him have a kind of a weird sort of haircut that comes off the back like that. And this is kind of, this shape is kind of reminiscent of Bird and Squirrel, which is a great book series um, that is being read all over the place in my building. Um, but there's that bird. Um, then this tall one, uh, we can do the same thing. I'm going to have him look down at his neighbors because not because he's, you know, thinks he's better than they are, but because he's taller. Um, I'm going to give him more of a uh, sort of a creak thing. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but there's a hawk out back that has been calling. And I got a couple pictures of him the other day. Got a couple pictures of him the other day, and um, he's beautiful. There are a, red sh a pair of red-shouldered hawks in my backyard. We have a marsh out back and they're out there playing around and I guess they were hunting frogs the other day because the frogs, the peepers are out and they were hunting the frogs and I went out the other day and I got a picture of both of them, just one shot each. And now when he calls and I go out to take a picture of him, he'll be standing on the branch and the minute I come out with the camera, he's like, nope, see ya. So I've gotten no other pictures. So while we're all at home doing e-learning and all that stuff, one of my things is I'm going to try to get better pictures of the hawk. Um, so here's another bird. He's kind of looking down this way. Um, and then this one, we'll try to get him to look up. So we'll make the beak go up like that. And give him his two wings on each, both sides. No crest, because that's behind him probably. And he's kind of smoother. Not a lot of like weird shapes or anything, okay? And that's just a quick sketch of that bird, okay? So we have birds, so that's kind of cool, all right? Um, so now, turn them off. We could do faces, right? We could just do different faces for different people. So we could do, you know, if you go sketch across like halfway down is where the eyes are on these, 
right? You do kind of like that. And then you get a center line. And I'm not going to do a big deep thing about drawing faces because that's something I'm working on more. But um, there's your sides anyway. Um, so this one I'm going to make big eyes. Make it some kind of alien, I guess. Could be glasses too. You could just do kind of big glasses like that. We'll do some slicked back hair. Again, I'm not spending a lot of time on this because I want to cover a whole bunch of stuff. I don't want you sitting here for an hour watching me draw my computer when you could be drawing yourself. So um, I'm going to put his nose right there and his mouth down here. A little part under his lip right here, which I think gives it a little definition. And the rest of his face. Don't like that. Problem, problems with my pen here. His neck would come off somewhere like this. Okay. This one, I'm going to make a very long kind of pointed nose. Deep set eyebrows. Got a comb over. It's looking a little jowly there too. So we're gonna add him a chin, give him a chin right there. So there's another one. A square. I think he probably needs square glasses. The whole point of this, I, I hate to call it an exercise because it makes me sound like an expert and I'm trying to tell you, you know, something fabulous that you should, you do. And I don't consider myself an expert. I just like to draw stuff. Um, I'm going to make him got his little square ears too. Um, and then a little square nose. You can put the eyes in the glasses. Um... I think he's he's screaming for flat top, I think. Um, uh, but anyway, this this exercise is just it's a fun way to play, you know, it's just a fun way to play with your let your brain sort of play a little bit, you know. So this guy never gave him a neck, but let's you can notice he went to do the neck on the other one and didn't saw it. There's his neck. And I'm gonna make his neck a little. Actually, you know what? If he's like a kid, you can do like a thinner neck like that. It'd be kind of fun. It's like a T-shirt around it, right? And this guy will give like a uh, like a polo shirt kind of feel to it. Um, this one I don't know. Be buttoned up all the way. I don't. I don't, I don't like that because it's like a, you know, stereotypical, you know, nerds with glasses kind of thing, which I don't think is a cool thing. Um, actually, there's some kids at my school have some really cool glasses. <laughs> um, not these little ones, but um, anyway. So you can see we can do we can do faces across. I'm not, I'm not, these are basically going to be replicas of this. Um, this one I could do like a brow up here, like this part of like the nose up here, and just drop down and do like a 
a crooked nose at the bottom. Um, I think cat kind of eyes would be good for this one. You know, it's kind of funny. You, you, you want to be um, creative and do something different. Um, and sometimes your stuff looks like Picasso work, which is not a bad thing, but in that it's, you, you leap into um, not as believable, I guess, um, which I'm kind of flirting with here, I think. Um, let's give him a big toothy grin. And there's different ways you can do teeth, too. You can just do a straight line across, right? Even su suggested like that, which means like, like a perfect smile. It's like it's so bright that it's blind. You can't see the definition of the teeth. Um, you can do, you know, the one where you draw the individual teeth like this with a line in between. You can do that. Um, you can also do the, <laughs> the one where you kind of like draw the individual teeth and that gives you, and you can just be loose with it, and that gives you the the ability to have like like real teeth. I mean, they're all sort of slightly different. Um, and you can color this in if you want to when you go to color it. All right, color that all in black. Um, anyway, there's him. Um, let's give him some like big ears like that. And I'm going to give him a pretty square neck too. I'm going to sort of drag his chin out a little bit more. And him for hair I kind of feel it should be perfect. Like, you know, like a reporter kind of. Actually, kind of looks like the dad from uh, Fairly Odd Parents. No, it doesn't. Who am I thinking of? But anyway, I'm give him a tie. And then the round one, let's give him a round nose like this. Um, just do regular little eyes like this. Some eyebrows. All of a sudden he looks to me like a, well, he should be bald, number one. Um, but number two, um, He's like like a milkman or an old fashioned like a you know like a laborer kind of guy like a milkman or a bricklayer or you know something like that. So that's the third one. Okay. So faces, another thing you can do, right? Um, call that faces. And, oops, I just realized I drew all men. That's terrible. That's not good at all. Let's go over here. Get an eraser. Let's fix that. I don't know if we should do with glasses or without. I'm going to do without. Do a kinder face. Again, with lag on my pen for some reason. The 
there looks a little cleaner with this. Am I constrained by my shape? Am I, you know, only, you know, she's a little crooked, but the, I think the shape is a little crooked, but, um, no, I, I mean, I don't think so. I, I, um, I'm not keeping everything inside the shape. So like the hairs outside of the shape and the, you know, it doesn't have to be. frilly collar even though nobody needs to wear frilly collars if they're a girl it's just I'm just saying I'm just doing that for this so there's a girl okay so now we have faces <laughs> um, so faces and let's do another one um, obviously <laughs> you know we're gonna do fish at some point but let's not do it yet <laughs> Um, at one point when I did this exercise, I made cars and vehicles and stuff like that. And they were kind of cool. So um, I just took the shape like this. And I tried to boot like little BMW Isetta cars or Isetta cars. I don't know what they, how you call it, how you say it. And I just kind of added little wheels to them. There used to be this guy that used to do these cars all the time named Stan Mott. Great cartoonist. And he used to do like these little cars all the time. And um, it just kind of reminded me, it's kind of like an homage to him, I guess. Um, but you do cars, you know, right? Little vehicles. With some taillights, headlights, you know, a door. Maybe it's kind of an alternative unit universe kind of car. Um, same thing with this one. Uh, you know, this one we could make a, a, like a truck maybe. I eh, don't like this too far forward. You know, we'll do a, a dually in the back like this. Maybe make some kind of truck. Um, this one just do wheel arches like that. Again with a door. And we'll leave it blank in the back. Like it's got like a panel truck kind of look to it. We do like a little grill on the front. And some tail lights in the back. If you want to do like a little uh, exhaust pipe, you do the the, the uh, clouds of exhaust coming out the back. Although I don't know that that's necessarily green anymore. Um, we could do you know a school bus or something with this one. We could do you know wheels in the front, wheels in the back, and we'll just put a bunch of window or uh, yeah windows and stuff in it as it goes around the back. So this is obviously the street side. We don't have to actually make the door. Do a couple lines across the back. Oh, we have to have the line in the front, the, the lights in the front, right? And the lights in the back. Which we would then color when we go to color these. Um, this could be like a big moving truck or something. You could be like a, a cab over kind of design here. So you can go like this. Or it could be a pickup truck with a camper on the back. That'd be kind of cool, too. Let's try that. So this one I'm going to extend a little bit. So I'm just going to come forward just a little bit to give us a pickup truck feel. And then draw the wheels. I think cartoon trucks are kind of... Car cartoon cars are kind of cool. And then we make the camper. Sort of so you can see in this case specifically right that the shape is just a suggestion right it's just sort of to get your mind going and just to play with it a little bit so cameras have you know like this windows and maybe a little step out the back and uh, a couple straps to hold it on the back of the pickup truck um, maybe a big sliding window here like this that have a slider down the center of it. Oh, and you can do like a little um, chimney out the top, you know, one of those little metal chimneys. Um, it's really funny because this, this pickup truck actually comes from, in my brain, it comes from a trip that I took 
as a kid with my dad and my mom and my brother and probably my sister. Um, she was born while we were in California, and I don't know if it was before or after she was. It had to be after, but she was probably a baby. Um, my dad and mom. My dad was an amateur rock hound. Like he liked to collect rocks and geology and stuff like that. And um, we rented a, a truck just like this one, and um, piled the whole family of five in the back of it, and went up to the high desert in California and found like rocks and explored old mines and stuff like that. We weren't allowed to go into the mines because I was only like seven or eight years old, nine years old maybe. Um, but anyway, that kind of truck reminds me of that. Um, and then, I don't know what we can do over here for this last one. Um, let's do a version of the, of the the square back, the Volkswagen that I had when I was a kid. So we'll just kind of come forward and make it a little bump out front. The wheels. And then we're going to take it sort of straight back a little bit and sort of square it off a little. So again, like I said, it's not... You don't have to use the shape exactly as it is. It's just an idea. It's just a thought, to sort of get your your head going a little bit and get your you know start thinking about it. I had a page once I did of like all these, like I was just playing on a on a sketch pad, and um, oh look, I just created the first mini 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 minivan. So, um, so anyway, cars. <laughs> Uh, but I did a whole bunch of these. I did submarines. I did, you know, school buses. I did fish. I did all sorts of stuff. Um, so let's go here. Turn that off. We'll do one more, which of course will be fish, because you know, you have to do fish. Um, so you know, little puffer fish. We kind of touched on this the other day when we were talking about the sketching the fish and stuff like that, but. Puffer fish always seem like we're, you know, <laughs> like they're nervous about looking, looking around. You do little spiky things coming off of them too if you want to. Um, when my, uh, brother-in-law and sister and sister got married they got married in the Caribbean and they got married in the Caribbean because it was great snorkeling and so we went down snorkeling and there were a whole bunch of box puffer fish and they basically looked like this one here with the puffer fish sort of little beak out the front or lips out the front and then they would blow up to something like this <laughs> you know when you when you startled them but um, this one, just like the other day, I think I'm just going to bring his tail off the bottom like this. It makes him look like a more cerebral fish. <laughs> like he, is there such a thing as a cerebral fish? I'm not sure. Um, uh, let's not do a round eye for him. Let's do something more shapey. Um, make him very intense. Maybe he's an angry little square fish. I don't know why it would be angry. I don't know. Maybe somebody took something from her or something. Anyway, so there's a fish. Um, this one I'm going to do as I'm going to use as the top of a squid. So I'm going to come around like this. No, I'm not making a car. Those are the squid eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five. Six. I think they're too close to each other. I think this one needs to start and go out farther. It's like this. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. There's eight. Um, so then we just take these and come in like this. Make that one like, probably connect to this one because this one's going to come in the other way. 
like this. And this one is going to probably fall behind that one. Um, when I first started working at the school where I work, um, one of the teachers found out I could draw a little bit and asked if I could do a, an octopus for this, the classroom window with the massive, like, I don't know, like six or eight by five or six window and uh, and I did and it was on a big you know the big rolls of paper you get and you pull like big color paper and I it was green paper I remember and uh, I pulled this big sheet of thing out and I just sketched it because all the legs were all rounded around each other and stuff like that and they had it for a long time I don't know whatever happened to it I'll have to ask uh, one of the teachers if we ever get back to school so I'm just kidding of course when we get back to school. Um, so there's a squid that I would have taken a lot more time on. Um, this one could be a box jellyfish, which is kind of interesting and a really easy way of doing it. And because they're so, um, they, they're like really nasty as far as this, they're not nasty on purpose, it's just what they have. Um, I'm going to give like little eyes down here. And then just a whole bunch of tentacles. And then this one, I'm just going to do a goldfish, like a regular goldfish. Come off like this. Give it a big, sort of large, flowy tail. So the reason I can switch to a, uh, if you touch this tip, it's an er it goes to the eraser brush, and if you touch this tip, it's the drawing side, so that's kind of cool. Um, I also use undo a lot, as you know. Um, I'm not going to even draw a mouth on this until I get to it later. There needs to be a flowy thing there too, I think. Gill slit. You could go crazy in here. I mean, you could like you know go in and draw all the individual like the splines of the. In between the webbing of the fins and stuff like that, you can do that too. Um, and now it needs a big flowy thing top on top too, right? There's a goldfish. I don't like the mouth. It's better. Um, if you wanted to color it, you could. Um, I can color, I'll color it with, with uh, a paintbrush here. Um, I'm going to color behind it. And then we're going to go, because I think I've used up enough of your time already. Hey, where did my brushes go? There they are. So I'm going to go down to my paint brushes. And we'll color the goldfish before we go. How's that? That's way too big. That's closer. Kind of, it's called a gouache brush, but it, it kind of mimics, I think, crayon some to some extent. It has the texture of the paper and stuff on it.
I think the next time we get together, we may take this and I'll show you some tricks about, you know, making it sort of more 3D like the dinosaur guy I just showed you before. Go outside the line sometimes. I think it looks kind of cool. Right. So I think that's it. Um, if you if you have requests like to draw stuff, like the kids ask me to draw stuff all the time at home or at school. If you have requests, um, you use the hashtag and you can reach out to me on Facebook. And if your kid has a request, like wants to know how to draw something, not that I'll know everything, but I'm certainly willing to give it a shot. <laughs> All right, so I think that's going to do it for today. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one, probably in a couple of days. Maybe we'll do one on Sunday afternoon or something. All right, bye.